Next, we're going to take a look at the derivative of natural log of x and b to the x, where b is some constant. We're going to start by looking at natural log of x. So first, let's recall what is natural log of x. And natural log is the inverse function of the function e to the x. Well, what does that mean? That means that if I compose my function e to the x, and instead of putting in x, I put in its inverse function, natural log of x, I get back what I started with, which is the value of x. This is sort of my definition of inverse functions. I could write it another way that if I were to plug this function, like if I plug f inverse of x into my function f, these two, the inner inverse function undoes the outer f function, and I end up with just the inside part, which is my x. So let's take a look at this, and we're going to apply implicit differentiation to be able to find the derivative of natural log of x using this definition. So let's take a look at the derivative with respect to x of e to the natural log of x. And by implicit differentiation, it means I'm going to take the derivative of both sides. So I'm taking the derivative of this side as well. And recall that by our definition of derivative, e to the x, we know what the derivative is. But this is a composition of functions, so we're going to have to apply chain rule. And in this case, that means that it's going to be the derivative of the outside function. In this case, e to the stuff is my outside function, and I evaluated it that stuff. So I'm left with e to the natural log of x. And then I multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is, I'll just write that longhand, the derivative of natural log of x. Now, if we knew what this derivative is, then we could simplify this. But this is actually the piece that we're trying to find. We're trying to find the piece, the derivative of the natural log of x. And we have the e to the ln x on the outside. And that's going to be set equal to the derivative of x. But we know how to take the derivative of x. That's like with a coefficient 1 out front. So that just becomes 1. x has a slope of 1. So we want to know what is the derivative of natural log of x. We want to know what this is. And we see that we have this on this side. But what is e to the natural log of x? We just said what e to the natural log of x is. It's equal to x. So I can simplify this term. I simplify, and I get x times the derivative of natural log of x is all equal to 1. And if I divide by both sides by x, I find dun, 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 exactly what we were looking for. The derivative of natural log of x is equal to 1 over x. And if I wanted to rewrite this, I could rewrite this using uh, uh, standard notation. If I let f of x equal natural log of x, that means that the derivative f prime of x is equal to 1 over x. Let's take a look just for a second of why this makes sense graphically before moving on to our next piece. Graphically, let's recall what the natural log function looks like. Our natural log function is the inverse of our e to the x function. So I'm going to write a lot of things on here. Recall that our e to the x function, I'll put this lightly, it's our dotted line, it's sort of an airplane taking off. It, it starts. As it goes negative, it gets closer and closer to zero. But as my x values become bigger and bigger, my function shoots off exponentially. Because it's the log of x, so this is my e to the x function, the natural log of x is going to be the reflection of that along the line y equals x, because it's its inverse. And so my function natural log of x is something that never takes on negative values. The natural log of a negative value is undefined. As my x values get closer to 0, my natural log function goes more and more and more negative, just like as my x functions, x values get more and more negative on my e to the x function, 
my function gets closer and closer to zero. These are exactly reciprocal relationships. Similarly, we know that our x-intercept here is 1. So these are my x values and y values. So let's analyze what are the slopes on here, because my derivative function is going to be a record of all of the different slopes. We see that the slope is positive, and we see that here, for these slope values, it's positive and it's very, very big. We have a very steep slope, and then the slope gradually becomes flatter and flatter and flatter. So you would expect that the derivative would have high values here, because the slope is a high value, means I have a high value for the slope, but the slope starts getting more and more gradual as I go out. So I'm going to have a more and more gradual slope. But the slope of my natural log function never quite flattens out, so that means that the derivative function is never quite going to equal to zero. So it makes sense from this picture, this is my picture of the derivative of natural log of x, which we just found is exactly 1 over x. So graphically, this makes sense. Next, let's take a look at the derivative of uh, b to the x. So what do I mean when I say I want to find the derivative of b to the x? This doesn't really make sense. Really what I'm thinking in my head, b is any constant. So we're going to look at, for example, um, the derivative of 5 to the x is what we want to find, because b could be any constant. And we already know what the derivative of e to the x is. Recall that the derivative of e to the x is equal to e to the x. This is the self-replicating function. And that's about equal to 2.718 something, 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 something. That's what e is. e is an actual fixed number that's a little bigger than 2.7. So I know that if I take the derivative of 2.7 blah, 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 blah to the x, I'll get out 2.7 blah, 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 blah to the x again. That's great, as long as I'm only looking at 2.7 blah, blah, blah. But let's say I want to look at 5 instead, or any other value base b. There's a, a trick that we're going to use, and here's my trick. How are we going to do this? I'm going to rewrite 5 as e to some crazy stuff. What do I mean by that? So I know that e to the natural log of x is equal to x. This is by definition of inverse again. Right? And in this case, I want my x to be equal to 5. I want e to some stuff to be equal to 5. That means that e to the natural log of 5 is exactly equal to 5. Cool trick, huh? This is the weirdest way that you've ever written 5. There's, uh, in most everyday situations, you ask you know, somebody who was 4 years old and they're having a birthday, what their 5th birthday is, they probably wouldn't say it was their e to the natural log of 5 birthday. They would say it was their 5th. But for our purposes, this is going to be really helpful. Let's look at, so now if we want to look at the derivative of 5 to the x, I'm going to rewrite that as the derivative of e to the natural log of 5 to the x. This is helpful because by exponent rules, um, e to the natural log of 5 all raised to the x power. It means I'm going to multiply my exponents, and this is equivalent to the derivative of e to the x times natural log of 5. And we know how to take the derivative of e to the x, and in this case it's just an example, a boring example in fact, of chain rule. That by chain rule, the derivative of e to the outer function is e to the outer function times the derivative of that function. So in this case, it's going to be e to the x ln 5 times the derivative of this chunk. And what's the derivative of this chunk? Well, this is just 
a linear function essentially, and it has a slope of natural log of 5. Natural log of 5 is a constant recall. So the derivative of this is just going to be natural log of 5. And I'm going to do one more step to simplify this because this is the answer. This is a perfectly fine way to write it. But recall that e to the natural log of 5 is 5. So I can simplify this instead of having it be written as e to the x natural log of 5. I could do a little bit of maneuvering. This is e to the natural log of 5 times to the x times natural log of 5. And these pieces, this piece just becomes 5. And I'm left with 5 to the x times the natural log of 5. So what's our takeaway message? Our takeaway message, and I'm going to write this at the top of our paper, that if I take the derivative of b to the x, where b is any constant, that's always going to be equal to b to the x times the natural log of b. And an e to the x, that's actually just a special case of this, that if I take the derivative of e to the x, I get e to the x times the natural log of e, but the natural log of e is just 1. And so usually we just omit that when we're looking at e to the x. But with b, we have to remember to multiply by our natural log of b scalar.